Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonsom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 1st of July. Rescue operations underway at landslide hit site in India's Manipur, death toll crosses 15. Taliban leader hails Afghan victory at gathering to forge national unity. And Thousands of devotees celebrate Grand Jagannath Chariot Festival in India and Nepal. And now for all the details. Rescue workers were engaged in finding survivors on Friday from the rubble, a day after a massive landslide hit a railway construction site in Noni town of India's northeastern Manipur state. At least 16 bodies have been recovered so far and about four dozens were still fear-trapped till the last reports came in that that toll was likely to rise further. Rescue workers continue to find survivors as heavy machinery was deployed at the landslide incident site in Noni town in India's northeastern Manipur state on Friday. Drone footage showed the scale of devastation after the incident, which occurred while workers were sleeping in a makeshift camp early on Thursday. At least 16 bodies had been recovered from the site till the last reports came in. Over 50 people, including some army personnel, were still believed to be trapped, an official said. Local media reported the massive accumulation of debris had blocked the nearby Ijei River, creating a reservoir that was likely to inundate low-lying areas. Unprecedented rains that have lashed India's northeastern region in the past three weeks have also brought devastating floods in Assam state, killing more than 100 people. Millions have been displaced by the deluge and forced to live in government buildings and makeshift shelters. The monsoon brings heavy rain and floods to South Asia every year, but extreme weather pattern has become more frequent and environmentalists warn that climate change could lead to ever more serious disasters. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party, has returned to power in the country's richest state, Maharashtra, giving it a fillip ahead of the 2024 national election after an unlikely ruling alliance of parties crumbled after more than two years. Uddhav Thakre, head of the Shiv Sena that now stands split, has stepped down as Chief Minister on Wednesday. BJP formed the government along with a faction of the regional Shiv Sena party. The head of the breakaway faction Eknath Shinde took oath as chief minister late on Thursday, though the BJP has more seats in the state assembly. It is a natural alliance with the BJP, said Shinde, seated next to former BJP chief minister of Maharashtra Devendra Fednavis, who took oath as the deputy chief minister. A special assembly session has now been called for July 2 for Shinde faction to prove majority. Maharashtra sends the most number of lawmakers to parliament after Northern Uttar Pradesh and being back governing the state could give BJP a boost in sentiment. India's apex court on Friday blamed Nupur Sharma, suspended leader of ruling BJP for igniting tension with her comments on Prophet Muhammad and said she should apologize to the whole country. Her loose tongue, the court said, was single-handedly responsible for unfortunate incident in Udaipur, where a Hindu tailor was killed by two Muslim men over a post in which he supported Sharma amid the Prophet remarks row. The Supreme Court of India on Friday came down heavily on Nupur Sharma, the suspended leader of India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, 
over her recent remarks on Prophet Muhammad that triggered domestic and international outreach and said her loose tongue has set the entire country on fire. Blaming Sharma for igniting tension with her comments, the Apex Court said she should apologize to the whole country. The Supreme Court said Sharma's outburst was responsible for the unfortunate incident in northwestern Udaipur city, where Kanhaiya Lal, a Hindu tailor, was killed by two Muslim men over a post in which he supported Sharma amid the Prophet remark row. Sharma had filed a plea seeking the transfer of all the FIRs registered against her across the country for remarks on Prophet to New Delhi, citing threats. The court dismissed her plea and asked her to approach the High Court to seek any remedy. Sharma had commented on the Prophet's private life during a heated TV debate last month, following which Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government faced a backlash from Muslims at home and abroad, including from a number of Gulf countries. Another BJP leader, Naveen Kumar Jindal, had also made remarks that offended Muslims. This was followed by a series of nationwide protests, some of which took a violent turn and led to mass arrest by police in several states. BJP later suspended Sharma from the party and expelled Jindal. Meanwhile, the two accused in Kanaiya Lal's killing have been moved to Ajmer High Security Jail. A local court on Thursday sent the two to 14-day judiciary custody for an identification parade. Preliminary investigation into the gruesome incident revealed that one of the two prime accused had links with the Pakistan-based dawat e islami organization and had visited Karachi in 2014. In the latest, two more persons were arrested and three others detained in connection with the brutal killing of Kanahiya Lal. In news from Pakistan, the Pakistan government has once again increased fuel prices to a record high to implement the tough conditions set by the International Monetary Fund for a bailout program. Slamming the decision, opposition PTI chairman Imran Khan said, instead of finding alternatives, the government is putting unbearable burden on the masses. The Pakistan government steeply hiked fuel prices for the fourth time in a month on Thursday to implement the tough preconditions set by the IMF, International Monetary Fund, to revive the stalled $6 billion US dollars bailout package for the cash-trapped country. The recent hike will put an additional burden of nearly rupees 15 to 18 per litre on the masses. Beginning July 1, petrol prices cost rupees 248.74 per litre, followed by diesel at Rs. 276.54. Finance Minister Mifta Ismail said the move was needed to revive the IMF program, suspended four months ago after the previous government led by ousted Premier Imran Khan released from signed agreements. Now in the opposition, PTI party chairman Imran Khan on Friday slammed the government over the hike. He said that instead of buying cheaper oil from Russia, the imported government continues to put an unbearable burden on the masses. He urged supporters to join protests by PTI against the hike in Islamabad on Saturday. The South Asian nation desperately needs the IMF funding as it has been in the grip of a financial crisis, with foreign exchange reserves held by the central bank falling as low as $8.2 billion and the Pakistani rupee at record lows against the US dollar. Moving on, the rising cases of suicides in Gilgit Baltistan have become a cause of worry for the locals as many youngsters are resorting to dying by suicide due to depression and domestic violence in the region, which is suffering with no development and lack of employment opportunities. Locals in Gizar district said mental illness appears to be the primary cause of suicides among the youth while unemployment and poverty are considered significant influences. They accuse the authorities have failed to make any preventive services available. The people of Gilgit Baltistan have long blamed that Pakistan government is hardly bothered about the concerns and aspirations of the people in the territories under its illegal occupation and has failed to develop tourism and other sectors that generate employment. Depression की जो बीमारी है जो ज़हनी अमराज हैं एक बहुत बड़ी वजह है सुसाइड के पीछे फिर यहां पर घरेलू तशद्दद के जो वाकयात होते हैं इसकी वजह से भी सुसाइड के केसेस सामने आ जाते हैं और दूसरी वजह यह है कि डिस्ट्रिक्ट गिजर के अंदर जो इस तरह के वाकयात पेश आ रहे हैं इसके पीछे एक और मेन वजह बहुत सारी चीजों में इंट्रोगेशन नहीं होता है। 
The reclusive supreme leader of the Afghan Taliban, Hebatullah Kunzada, hailed the Islamist 2021 takeover of Afghanistan during a meeting on Friday called to forge national unity and attended by religious leaders from around the country. Akunzada, who is based in the southern city of Kandahar, had come to the capital, Kabul, for the all-male gathering that began on Thursday, praised Taliban's victory last August, which ended the 20-year-old rule of Western-backed government. The Afghan economy has plunged into crisis as Western governments have withdrawn funding and strictly enforced sanctions, saying that the Taliban government needs to change course on human and women's rights. In Thursday's speech, Akunzada said the group wanted peace and security and that neighboring nations had nothing to fear. At least one participant had called for girls' high schools to be opened, but it was unclear how widespread support was for that proposal. Taliban spokesman Zebuhullah Mujahid said that they would respect the decisions of those at the meeting, but the final say on girls' education was up to the Supreme Leader. Home to 22 million people, Sri Lanka is battling its worst economic crisis in decades, after official data showed that food inflation rose 80% compared to last year. Sri Lankans on Friday said life was becoming increasingly difficult, while the government struggles to stabilize the nation. Residents in Sri Lanka's capital, Colombo, said on Friday life was becoming increasingly difficult after official data showed that food inflation rose 80% compared to last year. Sri Lanka's inflation rose to 54.6% in June, its statistics office said on Thursday, compared to the previous high of 39.1% in May. Price increases were significantly driven by food inflation, it added. <laughs> A group of lawyers staged a peaceful anti-government protest, the latest in a series of street demonstrations that have been ongoing for weeks. Doctors, medical staff and people of various professions marched on Wednesday to demand the government resolve a severe fuel shortage. I really want to tell the people of this country, we will stand with you, please come to the street, we will fight against these corrupt politicians, they have ruined our country for decades, now we can't, bear, we can't tolerate anymore, we need a better country. Sri Lanka is facing a severe financial crisis brought on by a dollar shortage that has left it struggling to pay for essential imports of food, fuel and medicine. The International Monetary Fund said talks with the island nation had been constructive on Thursday, raising hopes it would soon grant preliminary approval for a financial support package. Thousands of devotees from all walks of life gathered in Puri district of India's eastern Odisha state on Friday to participate in the annual Jagannath Puri Chariot Festival, which is taking place after a hiatus of two years due to COVID-19 pandemic. The festival will culminate on July 9th. Thousands of devotees from across the country gathered in Puri district of India's eastern Odisha state as the nine-day-long Jagannath Puri Yatra or Chariot Festival commenced on Friday after a COVID-induced hiatus of two years. The chariots carrying idols of the Holy Trinity, Hindu god Lord Jagannath and his siblings Balbhadra and Devi Subhadra were decked in bright colors and adorned with flowers as the gods set out for their journey. Devotees jostled with each other to touch the over 40 feet high chariots amid chants and beats of gongs while artists performed folk dance. The annual festival will conclude on 9th of July. Two years later, we are coming here. We are very happy to see people's faith, confidence and confidence. The faith has always been made by Jagannath Ji as it has always been made. For Balbhadra, Subhadra Ji and Jagannath Ji, for the sake of the earth, for the sake of the earth, for the sake of the world, for the sake of the world, all people here are here. Meanwhile, a similar symbolic chariot procession depicting the celebrations in Puri was also held on Friday in neighboring country of Nepal after a gap of three years. Hundreds of devotees walked along on the streets of Kathmandu pulling chariots to detour the city. They chanted hymns and slogans hailing Lord Jagannath. 
A glimpse of idol of Lord Jagannath on the chariot is considered to be very auspicious and saints, poets and scriptures have repeatedly glorified the sanctity of the festival. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.